shoes. Yeah. She took off her shoes. We're just, you know, disrobing. So. Good morning, everyone. This is our sound check and our video check. If you can hear or see Nora and me, uh, just let us know if you're watching online, and we will be starting soon.
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship. It is the second Sunday in Advent. And we're so glad to have you all here in person and online. We have a few announcements. Uh, some people were asking if we were doing the Giving Tree. Uh, we are collecting gift cards on the Giving Tree out there. There's these little, well, I cut them so they're supposed to be ornaments. So that's what they're supposed to be, uh, gift cards for people in our community. Uh, we do get asked for them. And if you'd like to, you can pick one up um, on the tree outside and bring it in anytime. We don't have a, a set date for that. The Christmas pageant is next Sunday, and our kids will be practicing uh, today. Thank you, Lucy, for making that happen. And let's see, what any other announcements? I'm going to ask you to come up to the microphone if you have one. Is that it? I think that's it. All right. Let us worship God this morning. Oh, wait. Announcement. The Christmas um, concert is next Sunday. I knew there was something. 4 p.m. and there is choir rehearsal after worship today. You please join me in our call to worship found in your bulletin. Alleluia, the Christ child comes and we await his birth. Let us throw off our distractions and allow the chaos to settle. Let us watch for the signs and listen to the messengers. Let us stand on tiptoe and shout and sing. Something new is emerging. Something new is being birthed. Come, let us worship God. Our first hymn is number 135, Blessed Be the God of Israel. Or you can sing along with the bulletin. On the back, just let's stand and sing.
join in our gathering prayer followed by the Lord's Prayer. Holy God, we long for your peace and trust in your promise. We hear your call to turn toward you, to change our lives and welcome you in. Meet us here and fill our minds with your wisdom and our hearts with your peace, we pray. We ask this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And our joyful response is holly, holly, hallelujah. Those are the words. It's all you need to know. May be seated. Now I invite the Stanfields to come forward to light our candle of peace. We dream God's dream of a world at peace where enemies are reconciled and children play in safety where the poor and powerless find justice. We remember God's promise of a ruler of peace filled with the spirit of God, of wisdom and understanding, of counsel and might, of justice and faithfulness. We relight the first Advent candle, reminding us that we are a people of hope. We now light the candle of peace as we pray for Christ's peace in our hearts, our homes, and in our world. Let us pray. Be, Be present, present with, with us, God, God throughout, throughout this Advent season as we wait for the Christ child. Help, help us to slow down, down and, and to watch for signs of you all around us. May we hold in our hearts once again your promise and truly believe that a little child shall lead us. Hear us as we pray for peace in our world. Amen. Thank you both. And it is uh, time to share our joys, to lift up people or things we are praying for. I'm going to have Hazel run around and uh, just raise your hand if you have something to share and she will come right to you. <laughs> Julia. I have a daughter living in Nashville and they had some tornadoes and lost some people down there. So just pray, she's fine. Uh, but just pray for the people in Nashville. Absolutely. Candy. Oh, 
Olivia. <laughs> we have two joys. Um, yesterday, Nathan and I were able to go to his best friend's wedding. So congratulations to Hannah and PJ. And then we just wanted to say thank you to everyone that made last Sunday really special for our family, doing the adoption celebration for Bodhi and our family. We feel really grateful um, to be a part of this massive church family. And so just thank you all. Amen. Now, Candy. So I got a text from my brother the other day that said, oh, by the way, did I tell you? <laughs> He's following in our grandfather's footsteps, um, who was chief in Kittery for 17 years, and he is now the uh, fire chief of the Coal City Fire Department. Oh, congratulations to him. That's a big deal. Um, prayers for my father-in-law, Bill Kennedy. He's um, received not so good news this week, so okay. just prayers. Prayers for Bill. Thank you. Here you go. Beth. I have a joy. My son, after six years, has made contact with me for the first time. And he has my two grandchildren, a girl and a boy. So hopefully we can gather together and have some sort of celebration for Christmas. That is a joy. Reconciliation. Thank you. Gail. The lost and forgotten. Thank you. And Dave. Uh, prayers for my sister, Joan. Uh, she has a compression fracture in her back, and it's painful. For Joan, thank you. Anyone in the choir? All right. It was my birthday yesterday. Oh, my gosh. Happy birthday, Hazel. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> and we'll have our kids come forward for a message, please. I have a show and tell. First of all, do you all have an advent calendar at your home? Yes? Anyone else have an advent calendar? Raise your hand if you do. It can be chocolate. It's fine. It all counts. So I have had this advent calendar ever since our boys were very young. So that's a long time, and it's got all the dates, and it's got cows and donkeys and wise men and sheep, and let's see, we've got an angel. It's got all the pieces, right? Every day we're supposed to put something up, and we've been very good about this, except one year when our sons came home from college, we go, woke up the next morning to put the piece on the advent calendar, and look who was in the manger. A camel. The baby. the baby was in the clouds. I think the baby, if you walk around, I might have lost the baby. So the camel was here in the manger, and the baby was up in the sky. That's weird, right? In the church, how do you lose a baby? I can do it, trust me. So what did we do? We put the camel back where it was supposed to be, right? Yeah. The next morning, guess who was in the manger again? The camel. The camel. Nice boys, right? <laughs> so we did it again. We put the camel back where it belonged, and the very next day, the camel was back in the manger. So I decided to take this as a little learning opportunity. And I was reminded that Advent and Christmas may not always go as we planned, right? They can be, you know, messy like this Advent calendar. You may be planning to go to someone's house for Christmas and you know they serve ham and you can't wait to have ham. And when you get there, they're vegetarian. That's a star, the star. Or maybe you don't get what you want from Santa for Christmas, right? That can be sad, that can be very sad. Or maybe, what's something else that could go wrong? 
Any number of things can go wrong. Advent and Christmas can be messy. But if you think about it, was it messy for Mary and Joseph? Well, let's see. First, they had to ride a donkey to Bethlehem. Do you think that was comfortable? Yeah, I don't think so, especially being nine months pregnant. And then, do you think the manger was the first hope, first place they wanted to? No. No, not at all. So they ended up in the manger. Do you think they wanted to be surrounded by lots of animals? It sounds nice, doesn't it? Do you think they were smelly? Yes. Oh, I bet they were. Do you think they were loud? Yes. Yeah. So, you know, Christmas, the first Christmas, was a little messy. So here is what I want you to know, that maybe you're feeling the Christmas spirit. Maybe you are right there. But if you're not, it's okay. Maybe things are going your way. How many people are like, yes, things are going great. There's two people, three people. How about the rest of us? We're having a tough time of things. It's okay. Because the first Christmas was messy, and still, we got a baby Jesus out of it, which is somewhere in this church. So if you find it, let me know. Let us pray. Dear God, in the midst of all the messes around us where things don't always go as we planned, help us to know that a baby is born, and that gives us light and love. And when we share that, we are filled with light and love too. And things do get better. And all God's people say, amen. amen. So you can go on to church school and look for the baby Jesus. Let's join our hearts in prayer. Holy, holy, holy God. You are coming to us again in the midst of our lives, which may be messy. Things may, mean, may not be going as we planned. Help us to take moments to breathe, to know that however we are feeling, it is okay. And that you are sending your son to lead us, to love us. And that is enough. There are so many things to pray for in our world. We pray for peace and hope for everyone that needs peace and hope. We lift up people in Nashville and Tennessee after the destruction of a tornado. We pray for all places of our country and the world where there is unexpected tragedies where there is violence and help us to remember that we are the hands and feet of Christ and the things we do matter and make a difference as we lift up our prayers help us to lift up one another And may all who see us and the things we do know that there is a loving God in the world. We pray for Israel and Palestine. We pray for Ukraine. We pray for leaders who put the country above themselves. We pray for a path to peace.
hear us as we lift up people we care about and love and miss all our prayers in this time of silent prayer. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We have two scripture readings this morning. The first is from the prophet Isaiah, foretelling the coming of the Messiah and what will happen hopefully and eventually because of Christ being in our world. And us, of course, listening and hearing and following. So let's listen to this first word from God. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he will judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. I'm going to end that one there. So how does that make you feel? And a little child shall lead them. Anyone feel hopeful a little bit? I see some smiles, some nodding. That's a nice, a nice hopeful scripture. So now I'm going to read the second one from the Gospel of Luke. This is known as Mary's Song or the Magnificat. Mary, an unmarried teenager, sings this song after an angel has come to tell her that she's going to be giving birth to the Son of God into her world, which has gone astray, which is broken, into a culture which values wealth and power over care for the poor, to the people, to her people, a child is going to be born. Let's listen. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will be blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. That's nice, right? So far, so good? Let's keep listening, shall we? He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud and the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. Okay then, how does that make you feel? Still hopeful? Anyone feel a little uncomfortable with the words? I'll be honest, I feel a little uncomfortable, and it's because here's sweet young Mary, 
who in every Christmas pageant you have ever seen is sweet, gentle, docile, never says a word, right? Mary just sort of sits there holding a baby. And here she is singing about how God, through her son, is going to turn everything upside down. The powerful are going to be cast from their thrones, the lowly lifted up, the hungry filled with good things, and the rich sent away empty. That is some strong language coming from a very young, supposedly gentle girl. And while it may be good news for some people, it doesn't feel like it's good news for everyone. For example, when King Herod got wind of Jesus' birth, born to set his people free, he sent his wise men, right? The three kings to find him. And not to say, congratulations, it's a boy. But to what? To end him. To take him away. In the 1980s, in Guatemala, when hundreds of thousands of citizens were disappearing, the government banned Mary's song. Banned it because it was considered politically dangerous, subversive, and revolutionary. And the government was worried that it might incite people to rise up, stand up for themselves. And now here we are hearing this scripture, and if we're really listening to it, you have to wonder, who's going to be cast down? Who's going to be sent away? empty? Is it the people out there? Is it anyone in here? We are an incredibly wealthy community by the world's standards. Is it us? The first time I came across this scripture, I was a very new and somewhat young pastor in a very, very wealthy community. Someone in the church had just donated mil a million dollars because they could. I had been preaching once a month. It was my turn to preach in Advent, and I got this scripture. Now, they teach you a lot in seminary, but they don't teach you how to preach controversial scriptures or what to say to a congregation that may not want to hear the scripture or what you have to say. So I went to my senior pastor who was an interim and I asked him, what do I do? And he said, whatever you do, please don't rock the boat. <laughs> this church is filled with very wealthy and very influential, powerful people. Please don't make them mad. At the end, just wrap it up in a pretty bow. I'm sure I tried, but I've always been terrible about making bows like this. Is that the saddest bow you've ever seen? Anyone else not good at making bows? Thank you for not making me feel alone. So here's what we can learn from this scripture. We may not be able to wrap it up in a pretty little bow. It may be a big sloppy bow, but we will do our best. The first is we can hear this song of Mary's and think that it is about some people getting good news and some people not, and that's it. We're sorry if you're on the not list. It happens. Or we can hear this passage and think that this is really good news for all if we take it to heart. Because we know 
that when everyone has access to the things that we need, the things we need to live, food and shelter, hope, purpose, justice, a life where you don't live in fear or violence, if everyone has those things, then there really will be peace on earth. And the wolf will live next to the lamb, and the calf and the lion will lie down together, and all will be well. Like this phrase, when one rises, we all rise. Have you all heard that in some form or another? So we know because we are Christians, because we follow Jesus, because we are children of God, that this is God's vision for us all. And in order for God's vision to come about, some changes may need to be made. Politically, socially, communities, maybe even our own lives. But here's the other good news. All this stuff that Mary's song is about, it's actually happening right now. Can you see it? Can you feel it? Did you notice as I was reading it that everything is in the past tense? God has scattered the proud in their thoughts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones. He has filled the good, filled the hungry with good things. He has done these things because a child is on the way. So God is here right now at work. Now I know what you're all thinking. Linda, what are you talking about? Have you seen the news lately? There is so much heartache and heartbreak and terrible, terrible things going on. What do you mean God is at work? What do you mean God is here? And before you go any further, let me say this. Every time you do something that lifts someone up, feed someone, literally, emotionally, spiritually, help someone who is struggling, help someone rise. God is there. For example, how many of you made a meatloaf for the table of plenty a few weeks ago? A few people? The table of plenty invites people who need a meal to come in and sit at a table like a guest. Each individual, each family, because there are kids there, are treated with dignity and respect. It's what they believe in. It's what they strive for. So when that person or family heads back home or into the street, because they could be homeless, they are not only full, but for one hour, they felt worthy and respected and loved. And when one person rises, we all rise. And you thought you were just making meatloaf. Another example. My husband Brad's thing is caring for the environment. Six months ago, he started buying biodegradable garbage bags, which I made fun of him for mercilessly. But he continued, and every week I drop off our little biodegradable garbage bag full of garbage, and I throw it into the dump with everyone else's non-biodegradable garbage bag because he believes, he truly believes that one day someone will ask, hey, why does your bag look different than mine? And I will tell them that my garbage bag will disintegrate and all the garbage will compost. And the more that people do it, the less chemicals that are out there to be used to dissolve the other garbage bags, resulting in less pollution. And our neighbor who has terrible asthma 
will be able to spend more time outside, which she really wants to do, thus improving her quality of life. And when one person rises, say it with me, we all rise. Do this for me. Close your eyes and think of one thing you are doing to help someone who is suffering, struggling. One way you are lifting up the lowly and feeding the hungry, helping someone to rise. Keep your eyes closed. We're still doing this. I'll even give you some possibilities. Did you reach out to someone who needed reaching out to? A phone call, a visit. Did you feed someone, encourage someone, share what you have, share who you are, make music? Did you vote? Did you pray? You can open your eyes. Because when you do that something, someone rises. And when one rises, we all rise. And when we all rise, there will be peace. The peace that the prophet Isaiah hopes for. The kind of peace we pray for when we light that candle. And the wolf shall live with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. God is here. Make no doubt about it. So let's sing, let's pray, let's light candles, let's share and care and do it some more. And that's a big sloppy bow. And every time you see one or make one, no that God is with us. Amen? Amen. 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 So it's time for our offering. And as the offering plate comes around, take that one thing that you came up with, that you are doing to help someone rise, to help make the world the kind of world God envisions. Mentally place it in the offering plate, and we will bless it. We also invite you to make a financial gift to the church, to the ministry that we all participate in. And if you are a guest with us this morning, please do not feel like you need to give your presence with us is gift enough. I invite our deacons to come forward. together.
Let's join together as we dedicate our gifts. Gracious God, in gratitude for all you have given us, we bring our tithes, offerings, labor, our very selves to help feed a world hungry for peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much. And our closing song is Let There Be Peace on Earth. It is our tradition to gather into the aisles and join hands to sing. And if you don't know the words, they are on the back of your bulletin. Okay. That was Mike Willette. And you? Lynn Eisen. Lynn Eisen.